Hi, welcome to today's Global Design Forum workshop called Stand Out Online, Design Your Squarespace Website. With me, Squarespace expert Yeshin Venema. Really pleased to be talking to you today. And even though we're virtual, not in a real space, I hope that we can uh, connect and um, I can get you inspired about not just Squarespace, but presenting yourself on the internet. Um, okay, let's get started. I'm going to talk you through a few key features of Squarespace and at the end, give you a nice discount so that you can get 10% off your first year. So I've been working with Squarespace since 2012. Um, I was, and still am, a product and lifestyle photographer alongside my website design practice. And I was looking for a portfolio platform to showcase my work, to launch my business. And I looked at several options at the time and a friend of mine in America recommended Squarespace. Uh, I really trusted his opinion on design and web platforms. And so that was the beginning of my Squarespace journey. I've since built over 100 sites for makers, designers, architects, consultants. And it's just the only website platform I use. It's the most user friendly. I can train people on it. I don't need to provide much aftercare with my clients. They can just get on with it. So um, the proof is in the pudding. Give it a go yourself and you'll see what I mean. There's a very simple sign up process. It's designed beautifully. There is incredible back end support and resources available to help you. Case studies um, that really go into different Squarespace customers and show you how they've used the platform from bloggers and artists to online shop owners, uh, everything, everything you can imagine you can do on there. So we'll be focusing on Squarespace 7.1, which is the latest version of Squarespace. If you already have a Squarespace site, it's possible it's on Squarespace 7, which is um, the previous version. If you're thinking of using 7.1, you do need to start a new trial and rebuild the site completely. So just keep that in mind. Everything in this presentation will be entirely focused on 7.1, the latest version, which has been live since um, the end of last year. So we'll start with some actionable tips for planning your content and optimizing your text, site copy, and images. And then I'll talk you through some of the latest features which you can use to present your brand online, including the range of templates you can choose from, the header, the bit at the top of the site where the logo is, creating pages using page layouts, which is a very powerful feature on Squarespace, portfolios, how to use these to present your work, your photography, your graphics, your illustrations, your case studies. Portfolios are very powerful for presenting your work to the world. And lastly, we'll look a bit at styling, how to tweak the fonts and colors and uh, different layout options on the site. But firstly, it's all about the plan. You have to get organized before starting a website project. So I would encourage you to create a master folder in Dropbox or Google Drive with all of your website content. That way you and your team and potentially a designer or consultant can access all these files together. Sketch out your site map, uh, site structure, on a big bit of paper. Just get a pen and pencil out and sketch it out. Think about the structure of the site, what the different pages are called, how you might link between them, and just keep refining that. You're probably going to change the names of pages. You're going to change the names of links. So just keep refining it as you go. If you like to do that on an iPad and the digital software, fine, whatever suits you. Then start using subfolders in the master folder to divide up the different images and text documents that you have for the different pages. Use plain English to name these things. Select the images you're gonna use for your projects. Start gathering them into folders based on the project. So if you've done a photography project on lockdown in London, give that a title, select the images for that. Think about 
the main image which might represent that project, it's useful to select that in advance because you'll need that, you'll see later on when it comes to the portfolio presentation. If you can get testimonials from your clients and customers, very important. We love to see testimonials, endorsements from people. It builds trust. It's a great way to add a bit of interest to your website. It's not just you talking to the world, it's your customers endorsing you, giving you backup, recommending you. Optimize your images. Very importantly, you need good quality assets high resolution images and good graphics. And then you need to save them for a web. So they want to be 1500 pixels wide for most uses on Squarespace, or if you're using them as big banner images all the way across the screen, 2500 pixels. And you want to get them down to a decent file size where they're still crisp, but they also load quickly. And you can play around with some different tools to optimize those in terms of saving for different qualities and so on. But you don't want the images to look pixelated and low resolution on the screen. So test them out, upload them, see how they look, optimize them again until they look just right. You'll need a domain name, of course. It could be your, your name, your business name, or something else creative. If you're not sure, register a couple of them. Just make sure you have legal right to get that name. And once the site is ready, you can make it live on that domain. And to start your trial or have a go, just to practice, go to squarespace.com and just choose a template and get started. So the templates, Squarespace gives you lots of different layouts, which they pre-fill with images and different text to kind of give you an idea to get you started. So the two ones I'm gonna show you are one called Crosby and another one called Paloma. They both use full screen images on the home page. One's a kind of uh, plant shop. The other one is a podcasting website. So I'm going to go to these now in the browser and you can see me as well down there. So Paloma is a website for a podcasting show. So we have the home page, which lives down here in the not link section. So just to go back one step. This is the main login area of Squarespace. All of the site content is in pages. Everything up here, main navigation, is reflected in the navigation here. Everything down here is still live on the internet, on your site, but is not in the main navigation. So the home page usually would live down here. It doesn't need to be in this menu. Ideally, keep this to six to seven links maximum, ideally less. And remember, when you click on your logo or your site title, you get back to the home page anyway, so it doesn't need to be in the menu. So the home page here is a vertically scrolling thing with a few sections. It has a banner image at the top, which overlaps the header. It has a blog post feed in this section, and it has a image file with a background and a call to action button at the bottom. And then right at the bottom is the footer, which is the base of the site. And that appears on every page, as does the header, which is at the top. So that's that template. The other one is Crosby. So I'll, I'll flick between these during the session. So this one is about a plant shop. Again, we go into pages and we're gonna make a, um, a portfolio in this one later on to show you an example of how that works. But again, header, big banner image, some pull out things from the blog, a photo, some more blog posts some animated GIFs here, which you can use in the place of images if you want to do some animation. Mailing list sign up box with an image background, pull out, call to action to get a gift card and down the bottom again the footer so the footers on every page the headers on every page so just going back here starting with the header so the header is usually where i start when i'm designing a site because it kind of dictates the rest of the design once you get your logo the navigation the header elements in the right place everything else falls into place so it's a good place to start it's a kind of constrained area 
to get you started. So before you start messing around with the whole website, just think about the header. So to edit the header, it doesn't matter which page you're on, you click edit, it goes full screen and pops you in here and you go edit site header and then the editing box pops up here on the left. So site title and logo is where you would write your business name if you just wanted a site title with a font, which you can customize of course, or you can add a logo file for desktop view and a separate one for mobile if you like, and that overrides the site title. Then you have options for adding a button in the top navigation there. That's a good way to draw attention to a particular feature, something you want your customers to do, the main thing. Do you want them to buy something? Do you want them to contact you for a booking, set up a call, a free consultation, whatever it is? That's a really powerful way to engage your customers, get them to click on something right there in the header. Because your eye is usually drawn to the top first and then you scroll down. So use that to your advantage. So you can change the text there. You could say, get in touch. And it changes the text as you type, just to preview the text there. You can then click on this and you can link to um, a external page or a page within the website. So anyway, you see this cog icon, that's either a link or it's settings of some kind. So keep that in mind. Social links, your social media links can appear in the top navigation or not, you can turn them off. And the shopping cart can be turned on and off depending if you're selling anything. I'm not gonna talk about um, online shops or selling products in this presentation, but Squarespace is very, very powerful for doing that. You can sell digital products, services, or physical products. So have a look at that on the Squarespace website if you want more information there. Colors, I'm gonna come back to you later. And that's some more finessing details for the header there. The other thing you can do is go in here and you have different header layouts. So currently, logo on the left, menu in the middle, social media icons and button on the right. But you can click in here and you can change that to logo in the middle, navigation on the left and so on. And I think there's five different options here, including one where the navigation's underneath. So you can choose the one that suits your logo, the amount of links you have. If you have lots of links, this one's a bit more useful because there's more space for the navigation to go along. But flick between them as you go. All of these changes, you can go back and keep tweaking them as you're building your site. It's very, very flexible. The other thing you can do, which is very useful, is click the mobile view icon and see it on a phone screen. So you can do that at any point by clicking this icon here. Or you can click this icon to see the site full screen. It's also useful to, as you go, your sort of Squarespace domain, which when you start a trial is whatever you call it, .squarespace.com. You can look at that live on the internet, uh, not logged into Squarespace. It's a good way to preview what you're doing on a phone, on an iPad, on a desktop, ask a friend to look at it. You can add a password to the trial in case you don't want to um, get found in Google as you're making the uh, website. It's very useful to look at it in a different browser. So you can just copy and paste that domain. So that's the header. So the nitty gritty of creating pages and layouts from those pages is the next thing I want to show you. Squarespace has really upped their game recently with 7.1 when it comes to page layouts. These are fantastic. Really, really great. So I'll show you how they work. I'm going to go to this other template here and I'm going to go plus new page. And I could choose a blank page, which would just be completely empty, but that's boring. So I'm going to choose a page layout and you have all these different options. So you can just go, okay, I want a banner at the top, some text, some images below or a thinner banner, three columns of images, you know, whatever suits your layout. It's also a good way to practice and to understand what these different elements are 
and how they work. So for example, if I was to choose this first one, it just makes a new page, just hit enter to save it. And then you can click edit and you're into this page. So again, the head is there. Let's not worry about that. Let's look at this next section here. So you can see that section is highlighted with these blue lines. So that's the banner image. The section below that is a text block. The section below that is an image with some links. So this first block here, you can see it's between these two lines and you have the option of editing that block. So this section, you can change the height of it. You can change the width. You can change how the content aligns within the section. Very powerful. Then if you go to background, there's a uh, sort of stock image there. Of course, you can add your own pictures. So I've got a few images here ready to go that I'm just going to use as an example. Drag it in there. And that image is now going to replace that one. It's going to overlap behind the header there. I'll just save that. So if you're doing this sort of layout, you need to make sure you choose images and optimize your, your colors and things to, to be legible. So at the moment, this text perhaps isn't quite as legible as the previous image. So I might go back here, go to background, and I might tweak the opacity of the overlay to make that text more clear. Very handy tool. So when you click in here, it's actually hidden. You have to scroll down a bit opacity slider on any image you add into the site. Really, really useful. Always click save as you're going. Don't wait too long. You might lose your content. So if we click edit again, just to show you this next section, same deal. Click the pencil, change the height of it. If you want to change the text, you just click right in here, delete, start editing. You've got a basic text editor here where you can do the bold italic stuff, make something a link, change the text to a different heading and so on, indent bullet points, just basic stuff, but very useful. And below this, we have an image. And this is a really fantastic tool with Squarespace now. So if you click any image you have on the site, click the pencil icon to edit it. This is where you upload the image. So let's again, let's put something else in there. Let's get that one. Once the image is uploaded, you can click on the design tab and you've got six different types of image layouts. The one that's happening now is called card and that's image with a block next to it with text and potentially a button you can change the position of the image left or right you can have the button there or not and then you have these other image types the basic one is inline which is just a photo by itself with or without a caption poster which is an image with text over the top. Again, you can add a button to that. Really useful. Card, which is what we had originally. Overlap, which is like card, but with a bit of an overlap where you can, and you can tweak all of these. So for example, this one, if I save this, and go back here to home and then to design, and then we go into one second image blocks so this is an image block if i click on this image block overlap has separate design tweaks that i can do for example how the text aligns how much it overlaps how much the separation is on the title, where the button goes, all of that good stuff. It's really, really useful. 
and you can also tweak the colors which I'll go into detail on later by going into the theme the color theme and tweaking how the background is what color the button is and so on I'm not going to go into that now I'll come back to that in a second so very powerful images on Squarespace you can have single images or image galleries so I can just go in and insert a new gallery simple grid gallery just choose that one it's made a new section there again it pre-fills it with some content but you click on this icon and these are your images you can delete those add your own photos and once they've uploaded you can have various things in terms of the layout so i've got four images here which you're going to upload close that so at the moment it's made a grid of two across but i can tweak that again by clicking the pencil i can go grid masonry which collages the files rather than crop them into a grid it shows them at their full orientation so there's a portrait image here and, and three squares masonry layouts really useful if you have lots of photos of different orientations portrait square landscape and so on i can make it full bleed full bleed means all the way to the edge of the browser or full or indent i can change the number of columns in the gallery and i can choose to display captions and if i was displaying the captions I can go back in here on that first image give it a caption and then the caption displays underneath so there's lots of options flexibility to present your galleries within a section like this the other way to use galleries is in the portfolio function which I'll come to in a minute again click save as you go okay so portfolios if you're any any kind of creative um, an architect a designer um, a photographer an artist you're going to want to present your work in some sort of portfolio layout so you'll have different projects you'll have a hero image for each project which is your main thumbnail so project one project two project three you've got a main image you click into it and then there's further images and text for that project so I'm going to show you how to create one of those. So we go back to pages. We're going to go plus navigation, choose portfolio. You can choose from these three different layouts for the main portfolio page. So this used to be called an index on Squarespace, but portfolio is the new term as it's much more fully featured now. So I'm going to choose this one just gonna call it portfolio one and it's pre-filled six projects in here if I go back to this point intro bit of text to the to the project let's say it was case studies you could then select this Here are my case studies. Click save. Each project has a thumbnail image, which is shown at this stage. So this is the overview. You have this nice hover effect. So project one, click that, click settings. This is the thumbnail image. So again, I'm gonna just pop in my own photo there. Let that load. I'm going to give it a name. Let's say, let's call it ceramics. Replace that text. That's the URL for the project, the unique website address. And now we have, if we go back to the main portfolio page, you'll see that that has now updated with my new image and the new title. Then in the page itself, you have again, a space for introduction text, maybe a testimonial, 
if you like, a bit of background on the project. And then typically you'll have some sort of image gallery. So again, if we click edit and scroll down to this section, this gallery, we can click this and change this to masonry, for example, make it full bleed or a slideshow perhaps, which can be really nice for, it, it depends on your, your assets. If your photos are landscape photos like this, a slideshow is fantastic or maybe fashion images. If they're product still life, like for me, I usually use um, masonry or one of the grid options. There's also a reel like this, which is quite nice. Um, just play around with them. And you can have different types of galleries in different projects. It's whatever suits the images you have. Okay, so save that. So you can just work through that. You can have as many of these as you like. If you have, let's say you have photography, um, architecture, and paintings, you could have three different portfolios. And within each one, you could have a number of different projects. You can keep building it in that way. So that's portfolios. There's lots of options for the layout with portfolios. Um, and you can also in here, you can tweak the portfolio name. Let's say I wanted to call that photography. I would change it in those three areas. I would update there. Everything you change on Squarespace just happens straight away in front of you. Auto saves when you're changing things like this. It's very user friendly. Edit. Again, you're into the page. You can also tweak how this bit looks. So if we click the cog here and change this to hover background, we get this kind of layout, which is pretty cool. I'm actually looking for a project to use this on. I might start using this on my own website. I really like it. Again, full bleed. You can make it full width. There are various tweaks you can do to the way it animates, the way the hover function works. It's just a case of trial and error, changing one thing, seeing how it looks, changing something else. You'll get the hang of it very quickly. So that's portfolios. And lastly, styling. So the, the fun bit for some people is dealing with the colors, choosing the fonts, tweaking the layout, really getting down to the details in terms of what you can do there. So let's go to back to Crosby. And if we go to design, you've got fonts and colors at the top. Fonts is where you set your typography for the website. Again, the previous version of Squarespace, you would have to set the fonts for every different element, site title, navigation, heading fonts, body text, buttons, individually now you can set your fonts across the whole site so you can choose one of squarespace's pairings um, from their selection so you have sans serif pairings serif pairings or mixed which i quite like so if you see one you like you could just click on it and it will update on the website in front of you then you can set a base size, which is sort of the lowest, smallest font size they'll be on the site or go up from there. And you can twick in here, click into the um, settings box and tweak the fonts in there as well. So you can keep the Squarespace selections or you can browse fonts and choose from a huge range of free fonts to use on the site. You can import other fonts. But usually if I'm doing a project, I try and encourage people to choose one of the fonts here. It's just easier to work with. There's no code or customization involved. So try and use one of these fonts. It's a mix of Google and Adobe fonts in here and there's hundreds. So I'm sure you or your designer can find a, a fantastic font in there. Now, once you've set the fonts, you can then click back into any area on the site select the text and go between different headings. And then you can then 
once you see how it looks, you might think, okay, I want to make heading two slightly smaller. So you'd go back into your font section and do that. Really powerful. Next is colors, which is a big improvement again. Squarespace have added the option of having color palettes and applying them to different section themes. So if we were to choose a color palette from here, we could do that. We could upload an image and allow Squarespace to build a color palette from the photo. It just shows you straight away on the site what you can do. Let's say we like that one. Then click into section themes. These are the different themes from that color palette which Squarespace has generated for you. So this will make more sense in a second, but essentially you have some which are good for dark text on the lighter background, others which use color as the background. So if we go back now to the site and we scroll down to say this section, you can see it's taken that color there, automatically applied it, click on colors. So that's the dark minimal color palette. And you might say, okay, I'm not sure about that. Let's try that one. Again, it's taken the color, paired them, white bold, and you can tweak these on a section by section basis throughout the site. It's a fantastic tool. You can get very creative with using color um, once you've got your color palette set. It takes a bit of getting used to in here. Again, if you're here and you think, okay, I like that color combination, but I wanna tweak something, click on the pencil, save and it will take you back to the color option for that theme and allow you to specify the colors for every different section heading button um, image block on the site so earlier when i showed you one of the image image blocks um, let's just do that right now actually if i go into edit if I add a new section, let's just add an image. Let's add one of these. Click save, so that's a kind of overlap image. Image block collage is this. So I can go in here now into this theme and I can tweak the card background to be something else. So you can get very creative very quickly with the colors. Um, obviously, having a color palette that's given to you by a designer on brand with your logo is the ideal situation. But if not, you can definitely have fun uh, in here, get very creative. So that's the basics of styling. Um, each element you insert into a page has its own style parameters. You can tweak the colors. You can do that on a section by section basis, very powerful. There's various other options here for animations, um, spacing, tweaking the buttons, how the shop looks, how the different image blocks look and so on. So that's basically it. Thank you so much for letting me show you around those templates and um, show you the styling options on Squarespace. This is a code to give you 10% off your first year, Yeshen LDF, Y-E-S-H-E-N-L-D-F, one word in caps, gives you 10% off your first year on Squarespace. And you can start your trial today at squarespace.com. Wish you the best. Enjoy the rest of the festival and the Global Design Forum. And this is Yeshen signing off. Thanks so much.